Hey guys, One Morning Coffee here. Today I just wanted to do a quick video on the Patterns of Justice Monk for Diablo 3. This will be my first Diablo 3 video, and I'm going to try and do it in one take real quick so I can get back to blasting this season. Um, the reason I wanted to do this video is because I see a lot of people that are making Monk videos talk about how they are, you know, you get your Hadrix gift, which is the Patterns of Justice set, and then you can use that to farm for the Innas or to farm for your Wave of Light and then use those sets for farming. Uh, but I actually think that the Patterns of Justice set is more than adequate for farming, and it's actually my preferred method for farming, just because of how easy it is. If you're going to be playing like me for 10 plus hours a day, it's just such a chill vibe when you're farming with it. Um, so just to go over the set itself really quickly, um, there's a lot of really good guides out there on the internet covering this, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. It's all mostly the same. Uh, across the board, I will go over what I do a little bit differently and just quickly talk about the overall set. So for weapons, Wan Kim Lao, absolutely necessary. This is what causes our Tempest Rush to proc Cyclone Strike. Um, so that's absolutely needed. As far as the second weapon goes, there's a lot of different options that can work. You can pretty much just use your best Ancient, whatever your best like DPS weapon is for the offhand for the time being. And then eventually... Usually people are using either Echoing Fury, Ingeom, or something like a Vengeful Wind, depending on what you have the best of. Uh, so those are good good options for offhands, but offhands are not specifically, you know, there's nothing that we're actually getting that is necessary from offhand. Um, you're going to use generally five pieces of the Patterns of Justice set with a Ring of Royal Grandeur. Currently my Ring of Royal Grandeur is in my cube. Um... I use a Unity. You could also use like something like a Stone of Jordan instead of this, but I play Hardcore, so I definitely use Unity. Um, then there's Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac. This is for our cooldowns. But like I said, the jewelry is pretty much the same across the board. Everyone, for the most part, is using a Squirt's Necklace. Uh, the amount of damage you get from Squirt's is just so good. Uh, for the Bracers, you need a, C a Cesar's Memento. Uh, this gives us up to 800% increased damage from our Tempest Rush when we freeze. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, most players will be using a variant that looks more like this. More like this. Which is using the three-piece set bonus of Captain Crimson's. Uh, the reason that I'm not currently using Captain Crimson's is I have not been able to wear... This is my best pair of boots that I've gotten for it so far, which is just not good enough to replace my current set that I'm using. Um, I'm currently using instead the Guardian set, which I think for hardcore made a lot of sense really early in the season. I got a lot of power and survivability from the Guardian set itself. Uh, as you can see, I have over almost 1.2 million health right now, uh, which just helps me live on uh, hardcore. But now that I'm getting... Close to 1500 Paragon, I'm ready to switch. I just need to get good enough rolls here for it to replace my current set. Uh, so that's pretty much it for the gear. I think I've covered just about everything. Tayguk and Trapped are pretty much mandatory. The huge damage bonuses. You're getting full value from both of them. And then for the gem, most people are using Molten Wild Wildebeest Gizzard. Reason for that is it just allows you to have more uptime on your squirts by having that nice shield. Another option you could do is something like Bane of the Powerful. If you're watching and you take off the Gizzard and you put Powerful in and you watch your squirts uptime, if you have nearly full squirts uptime, then you could do something like that as well. Uh, so I think that's it for the gear. So let's go to the skills real quick just to talk about what I run for it. Um... I run near-death experience because, like I said, I play hardcore. You could switch this to something like uh, Relentless Assault probably would be your best bet. This would just give you more damage if you're playing on softcore. Um, the rest of these are, I think, pretty standard across the board. You need to use Sweeping Wind for the six-piece Patterns of Justice. doesn't matter which rune you take because you get the effect of all runes. Uh, Epiphany, Desert Shroud, I think that's super common across all the builds. Dashing Strike, which rune you take really is up to you. Um, I don't know why I have Blinding Speed selected. I actually use Way of the Falling Star normally. I think I was messing around pushing. Blinding Speed is something I'd use more for pushing. Just helps keep uptime on squirts because you're taking less damage. Uh, for Cyclone Strike, we use Wall of Wind. The reason we use Wall of Wind is because enemies are frozen for 1.5 seconds after being pulled in, so that's how we're getting our Caesar's Memento 
damage, the 800% there. And then for my Tempest Rush, I use Electric Field. The reason that I use Electric Field is because it's probably the best one for just chill farming the way that I like to do it. A lot of people use Flurry. The thing with Flurry is as you channel, you gain stacks, which down at the bottom above my experience bar, you can see me gaining stacks. And then when you release it, those stacks go away. You do an explosion around you. It does big damage. Um, the reason that I don't like to use Flurry for farming is just because it's a lot less chill. Every time you dash, for example, you use you, like lose all those flurry stacks. Whereas with my option, you can just you know keep going around and dashing as much as you want to, and you don't have to worry about losing any stacks. Um, it's also got the biggest AOE. You get the electric field doing some damage, extra damage around you. So that's why I go with this variant of it. Um, the main skill that I use that's different than a lot of uh, monk players that I see, and one of the reasons that I'm making this video, is I use Mantra of Conviction, and then I use Annihilation with it. Uh, by using This just gives us uh, increased damage to enemies around us within 30 yards, so everything we're hitting is within 30 yards of us, so we get full benefit from this. When we activate it, we go from 8% increased damage to 16% increased damage, and then the rune, though, is Annihilation. Killing an enemy that's affected by your mantra grants you and your allies 30% increased move speed for 3 seconds. So we're going to be able to zoom, zoom, zoom is the name of the build. And a lot of people, so instead of that, a lot of people are using uh, Serenity with the Ascension Rune, which this is actually a really cool combo with the Molten Wildebeest Gizzard. Because by having 4 seconds of invulnerability, you're not going to take damage, which means you're going to refresh your Gizzard uh, shield all the time whenever you use this ability, which is really nice and it's really cool. But I'm going to go ahead and just a minute here and run through a couple of greater rifts and you'll see that I should have probably 100% uptime, if not nearly 100% uptime on my Squirts Necklace anyway. So using something like Serenity is completely useless uh, if you're just speeding. So yeah, that's it for, I think, for the gear and for the skills of the build. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Um, and I'm going to cut forward here in just a second and I'll show a couple of greater riffs uh, just with the build so you can see it in action. All right, guys, I'm back again. I went ahead and emptied my inventory and I'm going to go ahead and do some greater riffs just to show you kind of what the build does. I wanted to record this live as well so that you know that I'm not just fishing for the best possible greater riffs. Uh, with my current build that I'm using, and I'm doing level 100s usually, and I'm do they're always under two minutes. Like, I haven't had one that goes over two minutes, even on the worst possible layouts. And usually, I'd say my average is 90 seconds or just a little bit under that. So, here we go. Don't be like me and get stuck on things when you're trying to get through. So you'll notice that I do have to wait a second, like it's not flurry, instant, blow up, you know, but it's very chill, I'm just kind of gliding along. I don't have to worry about like maintaining stacks or anything like that, we're just elite hunting basically, killing some trash as we go through. Um, if there's a lot of trash, like on this level, I'll kill a lot of trash just by running through it. So if there's a lot of trash, like in a highly dense area, like this kind of map, I'm not doing quite as much dashing because I want to be running and tempesting and getting things to die as we go along. If it's like kind of a barren map, I'd be dashing a lot more, uh, trying to get to the next elite pack that much faster. So it's kind of like a little, you know, Cat and mouse game, you gotta figure out what works best for you, how much trash you're able to kill just by running through them, or if you just want to go an elite hunt, because that's the best thing. The higher the greater rift tier I go, the more elite hunting is just better, and I don't really kill a bunch of trash just running through. Uh, this was this is gonna be a pretty good time right here. Yeah, this is like a minute 20, so what, like 80 seconds to get through that one? So that was, I'd say, a little better than average. I'd, I would say that 90 seconds is probably the average here. Let me just upgrade this gem and I'll just pop one more here. So you guys can see that we're not just fishing. A lot of people would say the graveyard's a really good map. I think it is a good map. It's not my favorite by any means. Uh, There's some more wide open layouts that are even better. 
All right, pop the next key. Here we go. This is a map that I absolutely hate, so Let's see what kind of time I can put up here. I always go in the dead ends and everything else on this map, so. Uh, the best pylons that you can get, by the way, for this build, uh, if you're speed running, like, to the point where you're nearly killing everything when you run through anyway, uh, power is probably the best thing you can get by far. Uh, channeling's alright, but you're mostly killing everything anyway, so it's not quite as good. Channeling's good because you can just spam, spam, spam your skills as much as you want. And, uh, yeah, after that, speed's good. Speed can be a bit annoying because we've already got a lot of speed already. So, you sometimes it almost feels like you're zooming too fast with speed, but it, it's still not a bad thing to get by any means, right? And we got another really, like, why th this is one of my favorite maps, if not my favorite map, so this is just going to be another, like, really good time, probably. But at least we're getting some farming done while we're making this video, so it's not a bad thing by any means. This is going to be another very similar time to our last one, probably. Or gem again. Maybe I'll run one more quick one. My plan was just to run like two, but I did get two pretty decent maps, and I was trying to get like a bad one where we could see one that was like a little closer to two minutes, maybe. Um, but there, the the point is, is there's not a lot of bad ones. We're moving so fast. We're elite hunting. Even if we get on a bad map, like the first floor of that map was pretty bad for us. We're just trying to like get through that map as fast as possible, get any elites and champion packs that we can find along the way, and you know, then we get out and get on to the next map. Like you're pretty much always moving forward with this build. You're just trying to speed through all the areas by elite hunting. Like I said, even if you're on a bad map, you're just trying to get through that map as quickly as you can and move on to the next one that might be even better. So this has been two, like the first map there is like not a bad one, it's not a great one, like it's kind of in the middle. I really don't like the spider maps very much, you never know which way the map's going to take you. Or at least I don't, I, I don't really like running these. But we quickly get through it and we're on to something that's slightly better in my favor. So it's kind of the name of the build. Definitely not as good as our first two rifts, so that's good. But yeah, I, I really like it. This is one of my all-time favorite farming builds. I'm basically just holding right-click down and hitting 1, 2, 3 about every, I don't know, 3 or 4 seconds just to try and keep our mantra at 16% damage most of the time. Um, I'm not actually watching my cooldowns whatsoever. Uh, just by spamming 1, 2, 3, I'm keeping pretty much everything up. And yeah, it's like run around, hold right click, and hit one, two, three. That's it. That's that's the gameplay. And then occasionally, when I want to dash forward, I hit my four key. And we're already about done. But you can see we ended up on floor four. That's pretty common, uh, even during my speeds. But we're still that was a much worse rift. Still at about one minute and forty-seven seconds or something like that for that one. So yep, yeah, that's the build. That's the guide. Um, hopefully some people will be convinced to actually try out POJ, uh, give it a chance, because like I said, it's my favorite build to farm on, and it kind of sucks that everyone's just saying, don't play it, don't play it, don't play it. So I hope you all have a great day. Let me know if the uh, video helps you at all, and I will try to make more content. Oh, back again, just uh, one quick thing I forgot to mention. Uh, as far as the build goes, I can do up to 110. Uh, if I do 110 GRs, I'm always under 3 minutes, uh, so that would probably be better XP. Um, and that's with keeping in mind that I'm running near-death near death experience instead of using an actual damage uh, passive for that one. If I was able to use another damage passive, I feel like I could probably be starting to push up to like 115s under 3 minutes. So that's kind of like the top end of the build for me right now. Uh, at 1400 Paragon for the season. I just wanted to mention that just so that people had an idea of like 
you know, it's not like you're stuck at 100. I just, I'm doing 100 currently because I'm trying to get as much gear as possible, trying to get my Wave of Light build online so that I can push with my Wave of Light build. So just wanted to clarify that. And uh, thanks for watching.